TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Heavy clashes between IDF troops and Palestinian militants were reported in the West Bank city of Jenin this morning, during which an Al Jazeera journalist was killed. Multiple targets were separately struck overnight and this morning in Syria's Kuneta governorate in an attack Damascus attributes to Israel. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett stresses that while Jerusalem neither seeks nor wants conflict, it is prepared for any scenario. Heavy clashes were reported in the West Bank city of Jenin this morning during Israeli counter-terror activity that aimed at apprehending terror suspects. During the operational activity, IDF, ISA and border police forces engaged a residential structure where a Palestinian suspect was believed to be hiding. Shortly thereafter, massive gunfire was shot toward the Israeli forces by tens of armed Palestinian gunmen. The IDF spokesperson's unit noted that the terrorists also hurled explosive devices toward the soldiers, endangering their lives. Therefore, in accordance with presiding rules of engagement, the soldiers responded with fire toward the sources of the fire and explosive devices, which resulted in confirmed hits. Subsequently, after the exchange of FAR concluded, it had been reported that the senior correspondent of the Qatari-owned Al Jazeera television channel, a dual Palestinian-American national, Shirin Abu Akleh, had been killed, and another Al Jazeera journalist, namely Ali Al Samudi, sustained minor injuries. <laughs> اخترنا النقطة اللي ما فيها مواجهات لا مع الشبان ولا مع المقاومين وصلنا لنقطة استنينا شريمة لبسات كامل معدات السلامة ووصلت لعنا بعد ما وصلت لعنا تقدمنا بضع أمتار كشفنا أنفسنا للجيش وللمرة إنه إحنا بريس تي في وصلنا فيش ثواني طلعت أول رصاصة بقول لهم الاستهداف إنه بطلقوا علينا النار لفيت وجهي الكيت شيرين على الارض الكيت شذا محتمي بالشجره وبتصيح لفينا الكينا شيرين على الارض باللحظات الاولى مع اطلاق النار مع الحديث انا وياهم انه علينا اطلاق النار استمر لاكثر من ثلاث دقائق اطلاق النار على الطواقم الموجوده على تصاوب تمكن عليه من يعني اجتياز الشارع للنقطه المقابله لنقطه امان مع ذلك ظل استمرار اطلاق النار علينا the IDF spokesperson's unit noted in response that it is investigating the event and looking into the possibility that the journalists were hit by the Palestinian gunmen who fired indiscriminately in the direction of the Israeli troops. In this context, the IDF's Arabic language spokesperson Avichai Edri released footage from the scene, excerpts of which were published in tandem as propaganda videos by the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad in which a man purportedly filming in the area of the exchange of fire is clearly heard proclaiming that Palestinian militants managed to score a hit, claiming to have witnessed a soldier falling to the ground, even though no casualties were reported other than the two Al Jazeera journalists. <laughs> While TV7 could not immediately corroborate whether this footage was indeed connected to the death of the Al Jazeera journalist, Israeli Foreign Ministry spokesman Liel Khayat voiced Jerusalem's regret over Shirin Abu Akel's death and called on the Palestinian Authority, which took possession of her body, to cooperate with Israel on an ongoing investigation into the circumstances of the deadly incident. We are saddened by the death of senior Al Jazeera correspondent Shirin Abu Akre during heavy exchange of fire meets a, a military counter-terrorism operation in Jenin. Free press is fundamental for Israel and for all democracies, and as such, journalists must be protected. There are indications that Ms. Abu Akre was killed by Palestinian terrorists fire. 
Israel will be conducting a thorough investigation. We call on the Palestinian Authority to cooperate with this investigation in order to get to the truth. The Palestinian Authority responded by outright rejecting any cooperation with Israel on investigating the incident, claiming instead that Israel bore full responsibility for the death of the journalist. Consequently, in an address to the Israeli parliament's plenum, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett reiterated Jerusalem's call, all the while highlighting the necessity to view the incident within the broader context of the current situation. Israel called the Palestinians to do a joint pathology and a joint investigation on all the evidence and all the evidence that are available to get to the truth. The Palestinians, of course, are being served. I hope for them to be able to do a job ובמיוחד להימנע מפעולות שעלולות לזהם את המשך החקירה. את האירוע בג'נין צריך לראות בהקשר רחב. מזה כחודשיים אזרחי ישראל נתונים תחת מתקפת טרור רצחנית. המחבלים הפלסטינים יוצאים פעם אחר פעם לרצוח ישראלים בכוונה תחילה. המבצע בג'נין הלילה הוא חלק מסדרת פעולות יזומות שנועדו לקטוע את גל הטרור ולהשיב את הביטחון לאזרחי ישראל. אנחנו נחושים להמשיך עד להשגת המטרה. It is important to know that while clashing narratives have fueled a host of uncorroborated conclusions, with anti-Israel elements utilizing the death of Shirin Abu Akhle for a mass defamation campaign, the Israeli security establishment is investigating whether errant IDFR was in fact responsible for the lamentable death of the journalist, or whether armed Palestinian militants, or mostly untrained youth, had targeted the journalist either by errant or deliberate FAR. And while the IDF highlighted its commitment to thoroughly investigate the circumstances of this incident, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi underscored that the troops that operated overnight and this morning under fire demonstrated courage and determination for the purpose of protecting the citizens of the State of Israel, while further asserting that the IDF will continue doing so in every place necessary. Turning to Israel's northern neighbor, where multiple targets were separately struck overnight and this morning in Syria's Kunaitre governorate near the border with Israel. The first bombardment occurred before dawn, when multiple missiles reportedly struck positions in the vicinity of the town of Hadil, where Iran and its Lebanese proxy Hezbollah maintained dominating control. Subsequently, during the early hours of this morning, another missile strike was reported south of Hadil, near the town of Jabhat al-Hashab, which is situated within the demilitarized disengagement zone between Israel and Syria. While no injuries were immediately reported in either bombardment, a number of observation posts sustained damage. And while the IDF spokesperson's unit did not confirm or deny its alleged responsibility in response to TV7's request for comment, Syrian sources blamed Israel for the attack, claiming that it had conducted surface-to-surface -surface strikes into uninhabited areas as part of the IDF's month-long multi-sector wars exercise dubbed chariots of fire. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett visited the IDF operations room from which the month-long chariots of fire exercise is being managed by the military's top brass. We are going to go to the work of the army 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 of the על כל ההשלכות של העניין. ראשית אני רוצה להודות לשר הביטחון, לרמטכ"ל, על תרגיל מאוד מאוד משמעותי שיוצא לדרך ויעזור לשדרג את היכולות שלנו, את ההכנות במצב אמת. אנחנו במקביל, יש פעילות מבצעית נרחבת ומתגברת של צה"ל, כמו שאתם מכירים. Well, the exercise drove Israel's enemies to raise their level of alert for fear of an Israeli offensive, 
Premier Bennett highlighted that Jerusalem is not interested in war. אנחנו לא מחפשים עימות ולא רוצים עימות, אבל אנחנו מוכנים לכל תרחיש אם יהיה. והאויב ידע שאם הוא יגרור אותנו לעימות הוא ישלם מחיר כבד מנשוא. הציבור הישראלי צריך לדעת שמדינת ישראל חזקה מסך כל אויבינו גם יחד, ואנחנו תמיד נהיה ערוכים בכל נקודה לעניין הזה. Jerusalem stop defense official for his part praised the IDF for its wide scale exercise which defense minister Gantz highlighted grants the political leadership in Jerusalem the knowledge of the capacity of the tools at its disposal for when the need arises היא קשורה באופן מהותי ומובהק להבנת האפשר והנדרש. וההתחככות שלנו בתרגיל, בהקשר הזה בהחלט uh, מאפשרת את זה. Thank you for watching us. As you may be aware, TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by TV7 Israel Productions, please consider making a financial contribution which will in turn enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Separately, I would like to continue encouraging you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide. In addition to our ongoing prayers for the city here from which we broadcast Jerusalem for its peace and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.